The particular story of John's Crazy Socks started back in the fall of 2016. For me, it was a uh, time of great change. There was a business I was running for someone else, but it shut down overnight. I, I was 58 <laughs> years old. I didn't want to work for somebody else. I was an entrepreneur. I'd started and run many businesses. So I was starting some online businesses. And where were you? I, 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 I become that, I, I guess, from school, I, I asked in New York, I, I went to Huntington High School and placed my time in the real estate tax program. We should let folks know John was in high school, yeah. last year of high school. In the United States, if you have a disability, you can stay in the public school system until you either graduate or turn 21. So John was going to be turning 21. That was his last year. Yeah. They were going to say, get out. We had enough of you. So John, like everybody else, was trying to figure out, what do I do when I'm done with school? I, what were you looking at? I, I look at a job program in school. I do it up to act like. He had already worked with me in an office. I he did. already had jobs. I, and the reality is there aren't a lot of great options for people with different abilities. For John here, he is a natural entrepreneur. You think, yeah. Instead of it being a problem, he turned it into an opportunity. My, I did. So uh, he could have found a job, I, what did I, you I say? I did find one. I, I said, I want to make one. I want to quit one. I, I told my dad, I want to go to business with you. I want to have a, a nice father and son business together. It was very well, cool. John, here's the deal. John is the true entrepreneur here. Yes. Absolutely. Sorry, Mark. I don't want to take yeah. anything away from oh, you. Oh, no, not at all. John right. is absolutely the entrepreneur. Yeah, I could um, tell that the moment we got on the call, John is all over it. You are probably one of the best salespeople in your own company, right? Well, he is. You're the face of the company, right? Yes, I am. I, 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 my title is, is Chief Happiness Officer. I'm a co founder. Right, we're co founders. Well, so how did so, you come up with socks? What? Well, so here it is. It's very cool that my son comes and says, let's go into business. And, I'm really excited. And to be fair, John is the youngest of three sons. And, and this is one I can work with. <laughs> Not always the others. I love them dearly, but we could wind up in the floor with pools of blood and, <laughs> and axes in our head. So now we've got to figure out what sort of business what we're going to run. What was your first idea? Our first idea, a bus door. Uh, I had no idea a bus door. But I, you kept walking around I, I saying, was saying bus door. we'll open a fun store. It may turn out that's what we've gone and done. I mean, you do have a fun store, but keep going. What was your next idea? A next idea, a food, a food truck. I uh, come an idea from the, uh, from the movie, Chef. And John, I love uh, that movie. I love that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> and the movie about a father and son fighting over a food truck and how to make and all that. So it seemed like a good idea. I, I good. And we were having fun figuring out what we might make. But we ran into a problem. Well, I bet you're probably not a great cook, but I'm just guessing. That's it. That's it. I, 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 we can't cook. <laughs> I can't either. We were good at the eating part. Yes. But then, uh, right before Thanksgiving. I uh, brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. I had smoke at my ears. Smoke coming out of your ears. What did you say? I said, I want to start creating socks. Why socks? It's fun, it's colorful, and creative. I'll always let me be me. I want creating socks my entire life. I, I, I try to look for it. We used to drive around looking for it. This was kind of John's thing. Okay, it's so John, thing. let me just tell you something. Every Christmas, I get my brothers a pair of socks that are crazy. They're not yours, but they're going to get yours next year oh, or this year. And great. I just Thank love torturing them with the craziest socks ever. And guess what? Last year, one of my brothers gave me a pair of crazy socks. There we go. There we go. So this seemed like a good idea, right? Relatively simple. John, if he loved Crazy Socks so much, surely there were other people. We could find the tribe, right? right? So at that point, and Natasha, you know how this goes, that typically what you do is you stop 
and you put the business plan together, right? You do the market research, competitive analysis, production projection, financial projections, which I have done plenty of times and I've evaluated plenty of business plans. And that's not what we did. We went the lean startup route. John already roughly yeah, had the I, name. I, I come out, I'm a name and I told the website look like. We, we knew we were going to sell online. We got some inventory. We were bootstrapping. So you make do with what you have. The only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook account. Yeah. I would take out my cell phone and we'd make videos. And who was in the video? I am. I talk about socks. Socks, socks, more socks. <laughs> and what day did we open? We opened on Friday, December 9th, 2016. And we were very fortunate. We got a flood of orders right away. We already knew who we were and what we were about. And part of that is it's really making personal connections with customers. Did you know but who your target clients were at that time? We did not. It was and were you using digital marketing to... No, we, everything was organic to start. Wow. We got, so we get these orders and most of them were local. So we got red boxes. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, I, I love that. Just one. Red boxes. We put the socks that. in the box. You can see that we still do this. And then we looked at it and said it needs something else. So what else did we put in? I'm going to dig in the arrow and candy. And we load up the car and we drive Wait, around. This is very important. What kind of candy? What did we start with? Uh, we started with Hershey Kisses. But here. Did they have nuts of them. in them? Nope. Okay. Because I like the ones oh, with we, nuts. We had to be sensitive. But here's, you know, a little side note, a little one of those entrepreneurial stories. So we were starting with Hershey's Kisses. And everybody loved it. You'd open the package, you could smell the chocolate, it was great. Until we got the email from the woman in Florida saying, you may not want to be shipping things to the South. So what do we put in now? We put in Skittles. Skittles. The purple ones for me are the best. And so I'm imagining that chocolate melted all over your gorgeous, crazy socks. They got soft, we'll say. But it was generally good. So there we are. John's knocking on doors, delivering the socks. How did customers respond? Customers respond, they love the socks and they post on a social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram a word get a spread. So we had people reordering just to get John to come back to their house. Families were waiting and they were taking pictures. Does this mean John is going to show up with these socks on Christmas Day for my brothers? He could. <laughs> we have. When we travel, we take, if there's anything in the area, we take them and hand deliver them. He loves okay. that. Oh, I'm going to do a whole time with you in California. You'd like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but so at the end of the month, really two weeks, we had shipped 452 orders. We had $13,000 in revenue. So we learned a few things. One, people, or people want to buy socks. Two, People want to buy stuff from me. They related to John. They liked the fact we had already pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. They liked the personal touch. So even if they weren't getting a home delivery, people liked the fact that we did home deliveries. And they loved the notes and the candy. And we did, we did learn something that surprised us. And we still have trouble wrapping our minds around. People, John, is an inspiration. People saw John as, it was a very emotional connection. Plus, you learn by doing. So we learned that this young man and this old, old man, man, we could sell socks. You had this great idea. You started this company with your dad. Is it as much fun now as you thought it was going to be? Yes, I think it's so much fun. I love working because I, 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 I so uh, create Great example, because I am leader here. I, I, There's no I, doubt about I, that I, in my mind. It's wonderful. We've been incredibly fortunate. We've been fortunate in what we've gotten to do. We've been fortunate with the growth. And what are you always saying? What are the two things that matter? Two things matter that uh, do for others and gratitude and, 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 make, and, make, and make a customer really happy, a give a smile, catch your one of the socks. Knock yourself out. 
Oh, yes, yesterday, yes, there was one woman, one woman with a socks. A, 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 a nice, wonderful night. He said, I love your smile, John. Okay. And I, I think that it, it, it's wonderful because I'm showing, I'm showing an example. I, 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 I have, I'm done. I have my colleagues done too. And, and, and I, 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 I haven't mentioned here. It is a spring happiness. Spring happiness is, is our mission. And I, I, I live by and a strong, strong giving ability can do. We, uh, what are you, a motivational speaker too? We do a lot of speaking. When we're done with this, we have a speaking engagement. We had one yesterday. People like to hear John. That's true. We like you too, Mark. But so Mark, let me ask you, you had mentioned that you wanted to talk about social entrepreneurship. Can you talk to me about what that is, what it means to you, why it's important? I, there was a time when the only thing that mattered in business was taking care of shareholders and owners. That time has passed. Now you have to take care of all your shareholders, of all your stakeholders. So yes, the owners have to be taken care of, but so do your employees and so do your customers and so does the community. And it works in, it, it affects all of us. Customers, I think, are increasingly asking, who are you? I'm going to give you my money. What are you going to do with that money? How do you treat your employees? How do you treat the environment? How are you connected to your community? And employees are asking, what am I doing here? In increasingly, people are recognizing, and I hope they're recognizing, they have lots of choices. You know, So people are, are saying, it's not enough to have a nice job. I want to do something that matters. And when you have a social enterprise, you answer all those questions. You're committing to something that's larger than ourselves and that has a greater meaning than we, we're going to make some money. And don't get me wrong. We want to make money, right? We like to live indoors. You got to pay that rent. We want to, you've got to make that money. But you do it by, by truly serving others, by making a difference for others. If you want I love that. That is such a good you, message. You take care of your customers. Yeah. Just as an aside, how many employees do you guys have? So we have 31 employees. Oh my gosh. 22 of whom have a differing ability. And we're very seasonal. So that 22 is like a roster of folks. And almost all of them work part-time because if you have a disability and you're collecting and you get benefits, mainly... In the States, it's SSI, so you get a cash payment, but the real important thing is you get medical coverage. Mm. If you work too many hours, you lose your benefits. Yeah, I got it. So, so let's talk about choice. the inclusion and working with people with differing abilities. That's a lot of what we're about. We want to show what's possible, and that runs through everything we do. So it starts with John here. Do you have Down syndrome? I do. I, I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome. And never hold me back. No. no, I can see that clearly. <laughs> John, it's not like we say, okay, you go to the back room. He's the face of the company. He's the spokesperson. We put it right out in front. There'd be no John's crazy socks without John. We, we hire people with differing abilities, but that's not enough. We want to show the world, look what happens here. Look how transformative it can be. And we do that in a couple of ways. One is to go out and work with people with differing abilities to show them there are opportunities, there is a future. We do that pre-pandemic, we held tours. So we'd get four to six school tours coming in a week. We host work groups that come in from high schools and social service agencies to come in and just get a taste of what it's like to work. We've moved all that online now, which changes things. It, you don't get the personal touch, but we've had school groups from around the world come and visit us now. 
That's amazing. I would have loved to have gone to John's Crazy Socks in school. Where I had to go was to our dairy processing center. This is in Des Moines, Iowa. And I remember the biggest takeaway was we got to leave with these little, you know, cartons of milk. Do your students that come get to leave with socks? They leave with socks. Okay. They leave with socks and hopefully an impression. Here's one story from that. We got a call the day after a local high school had come in for a tour from one of the teachers. So I just want to let you know, we have this one student who's autistic, difficult to reach. He didn't want to go on the tour, but he walked in this morning and he had printed out a picture of him and John together and came up to the teacher and showed it to her and said, I can do anything. Wow. So and you're basically just changing the world. It's, but we also want to show employers, here are the benefits. So, you know, one thing that all employers are facing now, in the, at least in the U.S., pre-pandemic, and it's already showing up again, we have a labor shortage. I hear all the time from other entrepreneurs and business owners, I can't find enough good workers. Okay, there is this vast untapped pool of labor. 80% of people with a disability are unemployed. And they are, as you say, ready, willing, and yeah. able to work. Um, and I bet they, you love it, right? They love it. It gives them pride, sense of purpose, it's, money. So like much of what we do, we run our own pick and pack warehouse, our own fulfillment center, right? <laughs> if you sell online, you got to, most people outsource it. We do it because we're creating jobs and we do a lot of personalization, right? So... We draw from three labor pools, people with differing abilities, moms, there are some dads in there, but because we schedule part-time, people can, you can put your kid on the bus in the morning, pick your kid up in the afternoon. And then laborers, our starting, our starting wage is $15 an hour. By far, the best labor pool for us are people with different abilities. They want to be here. They're enthusiastic. They're excited. They care about what they're doing. And, and it works. I'm, I'm so, sure they show up early and want to stay late. They do. Yeah. So are you, you know, like, do you show up early and want to stay late? Do you like working? I love working. I'll give you a John anecdote. Yeah. Good story. Yeah. I'll tell them the Special Olympics one. So sure. we, we do a lot of work with the Special Olympics and we had gone to a fundraiser they had in Manhattan. They had asked John to come and help out. And it was a young professional mixer. So it was all these Wall Street types, real estate types. And we got home about two in the morning on a Wednesday night, Thursday morning. And I said to John, I said, listen, why don't you just take the day off? Sleep in, take, you've been working really hard, take the day off. I said, okay, I will. So the next day I get up, I come in here and about 10.30, John comes walking in the office. What are you doing? Because I took an Uber to the office. I got things to do. I'll come back, the benefits, the reasons. It's not just because you want to be a nice guy. And we're not. John, he's a nice guy. I'm not a nice guy. We're going to hire you. You got to work. We don't give jobs out to anybody. What he works here has earned their job. Right? And the benefits... You would think they accrue mainly to people with different ability, but everybody is happier. Morale is high, productivity is high, retention is through the roof, people don't leave. So everybody wants to get there yes. on time, if not early, and everybody wants yes. to get in and do more. Yes, and it's, this comes back, I'll connect it back to the social enterprise. People talk about employee engagement. We've boiled it down to five pieces. One, you got to give people a mission in which they can believe. And it's got to be something bigger than ourselves. You can't just be, we're going to make money. Two, you got to make sure everybody knows how they fit into the mission, how their work matters. There's no cog in the machinery. There's no make work job. Everybody's job matters, and you have to know that. Three, put people in a position to succeed. 
Don't ask them to do what they can't do. So we don't ask John to do our finances, but there's nobody better at giving tours. Or yeah, he wouldn't to ask me to do finances either. Right? And part of putting people in a position to succeed, give them what they need. So one of our happiness packers, that's what we call the packers in our warehouse, needs a special chair. Get her the chair. Our webmaster, he needed some new analytical software. Get him the software. It's not hard. Four, say thank you. Recognize that people are working and they care. And just recognize the work they do. I saw you doing this. Hey, you did that for a customer. That was great. Thank you. And then the last piece, stay the hell out of the way. Let people work. They want to do it. So you're um, not a micromanager? No, what, you know, my take on it is if I have to do your job, why the hell am I paying you? you know, do your job. And we have that conversation, particularly in a small and a growing business, you might do eight different jobs. But over time, you add people, you give some of those things up, and you wind up saying to people, stop doing his job. Because if you keep doing his job, we got to let him go. And he's going to be in the streets and homeless. Please let him do his job. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. Here's a question that's not as deep, but I am very interested in knowing the answer to. Who designs the socks? As, as some design is one of my my design, one of our awareness socks uh, we have here. I sure accept all. Well, well, you're taking out the socks. So here's a little known fact about us. Okay. We are the world's largest sock store. We have more sock choices than any other store anywhere online. Wow. 2,300 different choices. You just go um, big. So most of what we carry are designed and made by other people. And everybody here helps pick those socks out. Great. And our customers help figure out what it is we want to sell. That's one of the benefits of diversity. How do you um, do that with your customers? Do you put up options and say, okay, should we sell this? Or do you just go by what is selling? Ask people on social media. We'll put up different socks. We'll ask them. And we invite people to tell us. So it doesn't matter how many socks we have. Every day we'll get suggestions from people. You have a giraffe sock. But how about a giraffe sock where the giraffe is playing a xylophone? And if somebody and then, wants that, and you do you go and see if that exists in the world, or do you ask somebody to create it? We, so the first thing we do is we have a, a list. We collect all that information. We feed it back to our product development process. And the question becomes, should we try this? And if it is, the first thing we do is, does somebody else make it? And if not, then is it worth our making that sock? Because it's a th higher threshold if we have to go make it. Oh, sure. One, the last question I wanted to ask you is, so this is all wonderful. It's just really so much joy and happiness and fun and crazy and really socially impactful. But the reality is you still have a business. And in any business, there's a challenge. There's many challenges. What I love to know is what is today the current challenge that you're really trying to overcome? We're four years in, a little more than four years in. We've had ups and downs. We've benefited from some viral moments and some media coverage. Watch what you ask for, you may get it. We have a very loyal and happy customer base. Our, we do a rolling customer satisfaction survey. Our net promoter score is 86. It's actually down from 92. People buy from us again, but what we have to do is break out of that. We have people that relate to us because of the causes we support, autism, Down syndrome, the healthcare superhero stuff. When they buy from us, they're going to come back. They're very happy. It's good product, great service. They like support, the, the giving back we do. The, they like that whole enterprise, but our challenge is to break to the next level. So we're doing a few million dollars in sales, but the sock market is $8 billion. You want a bigger piece of the pie? Because the more we reach, the more happiness we spread, the more jobs we create, the more awareness we raise. 
So yeah. what's the goal? What's the big, hairy, audacious goal for John's Crazy Socks? We want to be the company that gets everybody in America and in the world their socks. We see that we are more, we believe we will be more than a $100 million company. We believe in the end that we are about our mission of spreading happiness. The socks become the physical manifestation of that. So we don't, we, now we get people that buy us, buy from us at Christmas time, the holidays, or around World Down Syndrome Day, which people conveniently celebrate by wearing crazy socks. But we want people all the time, recognizing they can get all their socks from us. And so will you sell non-crazy socks? Yes. We're developing a line of dress socks, of athletic socks, but we know who we are and that's, we know our why, we know the mission. And that's really important because it, I, I always think you gotta know your mission because that's your North Star. And you gotta know your values because that keeps you on track towards your North Star. Everything else will change. You get a pandemic. Now, what do you do? So when you have those two things going for you, I said, we now have a strategic partner that a sock manufacturer with us. I said to him, thank God we don't just sell socks. That we're more than that. So you know, how did we adjust? Well, we moved tours online. We moved speaking engagements online. We started selling masks. We wanted to say thank you. So we made healthcare superhero socks that have raised over $50,000 Amazing. for the American Nurses Association's COVID-19 Relief Fund. How do you spread happiness? Every Tuesday afternoon, what do you do? I, I'm holding a day party every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Um, in the time. John hosts an online dance party. <laughs> Twice a week, we do a Facebook Live spreading happiness. Okay, it's more than just socks. It's that mission of connecting with people, showing what's possible spreading some happiness and joy. I want to say that you did definitely spread happiness and joy today to me. And with this airs, I know it will spread happiness and joy to all of the listeners. So thank you so much, John. And John's crazy socks.com. <laughs>